So as we begin this week, again, all the Nearpod slides, Ruby are still in play. All those things are still very important. And I really do hope, Noon, that everybody has been taking notes inside of their little pamphlet that I've given them because it's really going to help you as you move through the science project that we are working on this week. The goal, Nicola, is to have a vocabulary quiz on Thursday and to have the science test on Friday understanding that we're supposed to also have field day on Friday. Boosters Don stuff is supposed to start this week. We have a lot of stuff going on, but you know that we can't stop because in 18 days we have what? The EOG. So, yes. So Mr. Bullens cannot sit here and just wait around. So we're going to move on through this, and I'm hoping you've already got all this. If you don't, you need to go back and watch the videos we've already posted. Now, when we talked about the... Uh, the skeletal system, we said the main organs was bones. And as you all know, now it's very awesome that there's just one thing to memorize for that, right? Because when we got to the digestive system, y'all look at me like I had six heads, like Mr. Bullens. That's a lot of stuff. It is, and it's just going to keep getting worse. Examples of bones, your skull, your ribs, your spine, that big giant bone in your leg, the femur. You need to kind of be aware of what a bone is. You don't have to know all 206, but you do need to know some of the easy ones like skull and ribs and spine functions of the skeletal system just as a quick review this morning they give us our shape we took time to look at the skeleton's braiding of different animals and we all knew what the animal was even though we had never really seen the skeleton of that animal before we were like i know what that is because it has the shape of a snake the shape of a horse the shape of an elephant bones protect us which is probably the one thing i'm certain that we came in knowing um, I can't poke some of you in the brain because your skull is there and it protects your, your brain. Others of us in here, we do have to wonder, is there anything in there sometimes, right? A knock on your skull and it's like it echoes on the inside. I'm just picking on you. You know that. Wake up. Um, we know that it allows us to move in conjunction with the muscular system. The muscles are what do the moving, but the bones have the hinges and joints and uh, balls and sockets that allow the muscles to move us around, which is also very important. And then lastly, one of the things that the skeletal system does for us that we really probably didn't know until we started this unit was it makes red blood cells. Roughly two trillion red blood cells a day, and that kind of keeps our circulatory system, which we haven't gotten to yet, in working order. We move from that to the muscular system, right? And we were like, sweet, I can dig this, Mr. Bullens. I like the fact that there's only one thing I've got to memorize in this little box. What's the main organ? Muscles. What are some examples of muscles? And this is really weird, Jada, because a lot of these muscles are parts of other systems too. Your heart is a muscle, but it's part of your cardiovascular system. Your diaphragm is a muscle, but it's really a big part of your respiratory system. And the skeletal muscles are the muscles that we talk about mostly with the muscular system, the ones that move us around. So what do they do? Well, in short, they help us move. They help move food through our um, digestive system, which we all got to see last week when we did the digestive system. Cardiac muscles are our heart muscles, and that's what moves blood through our body. So if there's something moving in our body, more than likely, Braden, is going to have something to do with the muscular system. And we learned about two different types of muscles inside of those others, two like subcategories, voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary ones are the ones that Lila knows that we can move. Involuntary ones are the ones that Victoria knows that we really don't have to think about. They kind of move on their own. Although there are a few in that little gray area, right? Blinking, swallowing, breathing in and out. Some of those muscles that are involved in there, most of the time are involuntary, but we can't control them when we need to, which is very important. What does the muscular system do? Well, the skeletal muscles move us. They generate heat. As we're typically moving around, we're generating heat. I don't want to move around too much in my room right now because I don't want to generate any heat because it's hot in here. But if it's cold, your body might shiver. And that's your muscles. It's, it's like an involuntary reaction to being cold. Your brain says, time out. We're below a normal temperature. Muscles, do your thing. Start moving quickly and generate some heat for me. They give us our upright posture. Our skeleton's fantastic, and people say, well, Mr. Bullens, I see skeletons all the time that are like upright. Yes, yeah, because they have like a rod running all the way through their spine, holding them together. The muscles and the skeleton are what give you your upright posture. And we know that it digests food. 
it digests food for us because it's moving that food through our um, entire digestive system from the moment we start chewing, muscles involved, swallowing your tongue and your esophagus and those smooth muscles, and then all the movement through your stomach and your intestines. And even when it comes out the other end, muscles are involved. Um, regulation of body temperature. Um, it's hot now. We're moving into spring and summer. And when we go outside, we all start to sweat when we play dodgeball and we hit students in the head, maybe or maybe not. Um, that happens in this classroom. It's definitely an accident if it does. The, um, you guys are sneaky with your dodging. Um, but when we're sweating... There's like muscles that are opening our pores to let sweat out because that's what helps cool our body off because the muscular system regulates our body temperature. As we kept moving on, then we got to this one and we said, oh dear, Mr. Bullens, that is a, that's a lot of things for me to remember. And you're correct. That is a lot of things for us to remember. Um, teeth. But if you just kind of think about the eating process and follow it from the top to the bottom, you can remember all this. What happens in my mouth? Well, I have teeth, I have salivary glands, and I have my tongue. Well, there's the first three. What happens when I swallow? It goes down my esophagus. Where does that go to? To my stomach. Then where? Into the intestines, and that's where the liver and the pancreas end up throwing some digest digestive juices into our intestines to help us digest our food. Salivary glands. We all know about that. As soon as we start talking about food, and I'm not going to do that this early in the morning because you guys might riot, because the last time you got so mad when I was talking about pizza and it wasn't even near time for lunch, um, but your mouth was watering and you were all hungry. That is a natural thing your body does when you get hungry. Teeth breaking down food into small pieces. Very important thing that needs to happen because if you don't chew up your food properly, your stomach can't do its thing the right way. Your tongue guides food into your esophagus. Your esophagus moves food to the stomach. The stomach has acids in it. And that kills the bacteria in the foods and breaks the food down. It's like a super mushy, watery kind of substance, which then goes into your intestines. And then your intestines take out all of the nutrients the small intestines do. They dump that into the large intestine, which then takes out all of the water. And then what you have left over is waste. And we all know what happens at the end of that because we got to see that with our animation in class. And you all thought it was the most disgusting thing you'd ever seen. But it kind of has to happen. So that takes us to our next unit. And that is your excretory system. Excretory system. Not all waste comes out as a gas. And that's and I'm not talking about farting. I'm talking about breathing in and out. That when you breathe out, that's carbon dioxide. That's a waste product that your body has from um, burning and moving and creating food and making energy inside of your muscles. Um, that carbon dioxide is um, a byproduct of that. Not all things come out as a solid, um, as we learned with the digestive system, um, or as it says up here, or super liquidy if you ate at Taco Bell. Um, just don't eat at Taco Bell because it does come out rather quickly when you do. Um, some waste is in liquid form, and I don't think we, nobody in here is like, well, what's he talking about? I'm talking about when you have to pee. If you're, right, Urine is the technical term for that. We have to have some kind of system to get rid of liquid waste. Otherwise, we would die very quickly. You can't have liquid waste, Braden, building up inside of you. You can't have waste in you at all. You have to have a way of getting rid of it. That is our excretory system. You probably already know a little bit about this system. This is your kidneys, your ureters, and your bladder. What are your ureters? Those are the tubes that run from your kidneys to the outside. you got to have a way to get rid of it, right? Well, and to the... And to the um, they, they run to the bladder as well. It's a filtering system. Your kidneys, it's really cool. When you get to study the kidneys, the kidneys are super cool, the way that they filter your blood and remove a lot of the waste from your blood, and then they do their thing, and, and you are able to get rid of waste. Excretory system is super short. Okay, I know we've had some tough ones, but this one is actually super short. What are the main organs? Don't ask me why this box is so huge. I don't know what I was thinking. Kidneys, ureters, and bladder, that box could have been way smaller. Maybe I just wanted it to look nice on the page. I have no idea because it is kind of nice looking. But this is a very, very short one that we were going to go over. All right, so as we are moving forward, I want to mention this word. There's not really a space for you to put this, but you could put this in a notebook. And that is a thing called the transport system or a transport system. Unicellular organisms do not 
have transport systems. Multicellular organisms must have them, Miguel, in order to survive. Why? Because we don't do everything inside of one cell. We need something to move oxygen around our body. We need something to move blood around our body. We need something to move nutrients around our body and transport it from one area to the next. So obviously in the lungs is where the oxygen is being taken in, but if it's not transported around the body, it does us no good to breathe it in, right? It's no good for our digestive system to break down nutrients if it's just going to hang out in the digestive system. We need something to move that around the body. It does our skeletal system no good to make red blood cells if there's not something to move that around the body, and that something is called a transport system. Our circulatory system is a transport system, and that's what's moving all of those things around the body. So just remember that. We'll come back to it before we do circulatory system as well. But just so you have an idea, you've at least heard the words transport system. But for now, we want to talk a little bit about the respiratory system. I promise we'll come back to that, Mason. Respiratory system. When we breathe, we do that through our respiratory system. If you remember early, early, early on when we were talking about um, plants and animals, we talked about respiration. Respiration is the process of breathing in and out that, that animals do. The respiratory system, if you think about it, again, think about how you take air in and how you take push air back out. Where does it start? Well, your mouth or your nose. It goes into your trachea, which is your windpipe. It goes into your lungs and then into the bronchioles, which is all... You're able to do that because of the diaphragm flexing and contracting. Why do we have to breathe? It's a great question. Why can't I just sit here and keep my mouth shut all day? Well, you have to have energy to survive. We've already stated that unicellular and multicellular organisms must have energy to survive. When you eat, you're getting things into your body like glucose, which you can use as energy, but you can't just take that in. You have to have oxygen in your body in order to react with the things that you take in through eating in order for it to be able to turn into energy. We get oxygen by breathing in through respiration and use the use of all of these respiratory system organs. Remember the diaphragm that we talked about when we did muscles, right? That is the thing that helps us breathe. When we breathe in, it's the diaphragm. The diaphragm flattens out. It kind of goes down. And it allows our lungs to fill up with air. That way, when we're inhaling and our diaphragm goes down, again, remember, now we've got that differences in air pressure. Outside's a little greater than inside, right? And it allows air to go into my lungs. And then I'm able to flex that diaphragm back up and that pushes the air back out of my mouth. Again, we'll get into how it goes into the, the tubes, into your lungs and things a little bit as well, and in the bronchioles. Breathing out or exhaling, so you have inhaling and exhaling. When we breathe, wastes and like that carbon dioxide that we talked about that builds up through the process of making energy needs to be removed. So our body is constantly circulating that blood full of oxygen to places that need it, and then it's bringing back the waste in the form of carbon dioxide back to our lungs, and we're able to push that out again using the diaphragm, which then allows our body to take air back in. And we're doing this, Brianna, all day long without really having to think about it, right? I can breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe I can make myself do that, but... 99% of the time, we're not really thinking about that. And that's a good thing because that's the respiratory system is doing its job. So I will pull up this. So you should have this on the left-hand side. And here is what's going to be on the right.